I'm going to transition into the FE discussion. So this whole semester, I've been kind of hinting at the FE. I would say like, uh, you know, I was very strict about the calculators. And I was saying, you know, the reason the calculators uh, are like this is because of standardized tests and the types of tests um, that allow certain types of calculators, right? So do you know what I'm referring to when I talk about the FE exam? What is that? Fundamental of engineering. Very good. And when should you take it? Uh, you can take it during in college also or when you graduate. Okay. Um, yes. And yes, Brian, you get your EIT. Um, so FE stands for Fundamentals of Engineering. And once you pass, you can put EIT behind your name, which stands for Engineering Training. So your FE exam is a standardized exam. <laughs> from my recollection, it's about a six hour exam. Um, and it's standardized, so it's just A, B, C, D. I don't know if there's E maybe as well when you take it. Um, it has all your fundamentals, that's why it's FE. So it has the fundamentals of engineering, like all your calculus and your chemistry and all the science and math that it takes to then go do your upper division courses. Um, and there, you have different options when you take the FE exam. You can choose a focus that you wanna take. So in the morning, everyone takes all the same focus. It's just all the general stuff. In the afternoon, people can choose a different focus. So for example, if you're a civil engineer, you can choose the civil exam for the afternoon. If you're mechanical, you can choose mechanical. If you're electrical, you can choose electrical. But there's also, this is what I did, there's also a general or other disciplines exam that you can take. And um, so here are your options. If you chose the other disciplines exam, then what that really would be is it's the morning stuff, all your fundamentals, but just harder. Okay, and so for me, when I was a student, I chose to do the general other disciplines exam because I felt like, well, why study for two tests when I can study for one, right? So that was my mindset. And if you choose to go that route, you can actually take it sooner. You could probably take it your junior year because you just need to make sure you get through all your fundamental courses. Now, if you don't like the fundamental courses, you don't like chemistry and you don't like calculus, um, you got through them, but you don't really like them. You're more interested in your civil or your mechanical or electrical focused courses, then you would be choosing that other exam. But based on that, that might require you to wait to take the exam until let's say senior year, because you wanna get through enough courses that you've taken to feel prepared for that test. So can you repeat again about the general exam you just take one time? Yeah, um, actually what I can do, I'm gonna show you on the actual website. Um, So you can follow along if you want, um, but like if you type in NCES um, FE exam, if you just like search that, then you can go to FE exam information. And this FE exam uh, tells you how, how long it takes and all this stuff. And then here, here are your exam specs. So you can choose to take chemical, civil, electrical, environmental, industrial, mechanical, or other disciplines. And when you click on these, it'll tell you. So if you click on FE civil, for example, um, if it would load, okay. It'll tell you the topics to study. So it'll say there are eight to 12 questions about math and stats. There's four to six questions about ethics and professional practice. Five to eight questions about engineering economics, eight to 12 about statics, 
four to six about dynamics, seven to 11 about mechanical and so forth. So it kind of tells you kind of how to like focus your studies. So you'll want to have gotten through the majority of these classes before you took the exam. I will say when I took the exam, I hadn't even taken engineering economics and I know that the civils don't take it anymore, that it's combined with their um, CE 190A. Um, so you could wait until you take that, but like I said, I ended up taking the FE exam before I finished all of these courses and I still did okay. So you just kind of teach yourself enough to be able to pass the test. Um, so it tells you what to study here. And that's for the civil. It says, in, in your case, I had to take it in person, but in your case, it's a computer-based exam. It's six hours, okay? Um, and let me show you the difference between like civil and then let's say even if you are a civil major, you chose other disciplines. So if you choose other disciplines, you still have questions about math, statistics, chemistry, but then there's some other like um, different things that come in like logic diagrams and controls. But look, there's still ethics. Then there's some safety and health stuff. There's still economics, still statics and dynamics, strength and material. So a lot of it matches up. Um, so what I would suggest is you just go and you look at all of all of these disciplines and you just pick which one like makes the most sense to you. So for me, civil had um, kind of too many classes I hadn't taken yet. Like, I don't think I had taken my water resources class yet when I, I wanted to take it in junior year. And I um, maybe hadn't like finished some of my other classes, like maybe I didn't finish geotech or something. So instead of learning all the discipline, civil discipline stuff, I chose to go the other route of the other disciplines but it's a total it's just up to you you want to just make sure you've gotten through m the majority of these topics and if you haven't you'll have to teach yourself certain topics but the argument to take the test early let's say your second semester junior year would be then to give you a chance if you don't pass to go retake it again. Um, whereas if you wait until senior year, I guess you could take it uh, s your first semester senior year, but then if you don't pass then, then you're trying to take your second semester senior year and you're really busy second semester senior year because you're doing senior project and things like that. So the sooner you can get this over with the better because you want to get a job, right? And everyone's going to be looking for a job. And if you get your EIT behind your name, it'll set you apart from everyone else. Like all the students who didn't get it, they'll get put down to the bottom of the pile and you'll get put up to the top of the pile because you have these letters behind your name. So the sooner you can get it, the better. So if you take it and you'd fail, then you have more chances to take it and you want to have it under your name before you graduate. So this exam is really like just optional. It just makes you look better on paper, right? Uh, it gets you more money. So it's up to you what's really optional in your life, Igor. <laughs> but to me, I mean, yes, it's optional, but not really because you're going to, you're going to graduate with your degree. Um, and then if you don't take this test, then you're not set up to then become licensed. So this is the pre-exam to then become licensed. So for a civil, for example, you'd get a PE civil or a PE mechanical or whatever. So it's PE, PE stands for professional engineer. Well, you have to get some more experience under your belt. You have to have people who are professionals who are watching over you and supervising you for a couple of years before you're entitled to have the title of professional engineer, but you can't have that title unless you've already gotten the EIT behind your name. So it's a step towards your licensure. And when you get your license, that means you can like run jobs, you can stamp plans and you can like be a manager. You can be up at the top, make more and more money. So getting the EIT just shows your boss, I'm on my way to earning my license. If you don't have your EIT, then that shows your boss, I don't care about being licensed. I always want to be an underling. I'd never want to move up. I just want to like do my job and go home.
which is fine. Some people want to do that. But if your aim is to become licensed, to have that PE behind your name, this is your first step to getting there. So it's $175 each time you take it, right? I don't know if there is like, if you don't pass, like, I don't know if maybe it's discounted the next time. I'm not sure. But if you're employed, let's say you have an internship, you can get your your company to pay for it. They'll pay for it like once at least, you know, so then if you don't pass, you might have to pay for it the second time. But um, you can ask your company to pay for the fee. Uh, is there any other? So if I just complete all my units, I'll get my bachelor, but I need this in order to go on to get my PE, right? Yes. Okay. And is there any other exams besides the FE that I need while I'm doing my bachelor's? No, just the FE. And then, like I said, two years later, you're going to go for your PE. You can, the PE, for civils at least, there's three different tests you have to take. One of them, you can take them right out of college, but the other two, you have to wait until you get those two years. So you're not going to have the PE behind your name until after you've graduated, after you have your FE behind you, and after you have two more years of experience with other licensed people watching over you. So just keep that in mind that you're going to be studying again in a couple of years if that's your goal to become licensed. What do you recommend us about the time managing for the FE exam? So I would say to go through a few passes. So what I would do is look at like the first, well, I'm thinking analog because I took it on paper. I was going to say like, look at the first page, flip through the book. There's not really a book anymore. Okay. So um, they do give you a reference manual though. So, so you, I think you can get your hands on the electronic version ahead of time to practice with it and get familiar with where all the formulas are. So they give you like basically a formula sheet, but which is, I mean, when I took it was thick. It was like, it was like this thick, but it's going to be a PDF for you now. It's a searchable PDF, which is super nice. So just getting familiar with that will help speed up in terms of time management. Um, and then secondly, so you go through the test and if there's a problem you can't answer like right away, do it. If, just do it right then. If there's a problem that like you can't answer right away and you think mm, maybe I could do that if I had a little bit of time then kind of jot it down like okay I'm going to come back to that one and then um, so you're going to do your first pass of all easy ones your second pass are the ones that need a little bit more time um, and then your third pass you might be able to maybe eliminate some of the answers like oh it can't it's definitely not this it's definitely not that I have to guess right so you're going to have to do probably about three passes um, on the test now I will say that is a standardized test so what you could do is tally like how many A's B's C's and D's you have because technically probability wise there should be 25% of each right so there should be a quarter of A's B's C's and D's so what you could do when you're super guessing at the end and you're just like I have no clue I can't even eliminate any on this problem you could look at your tally and be like well I don't have very many D's so I guess I'm gonna guess D like that could help you probability wise um, just remember that each problem is worth the same so there are some problems that have no calculations at all that are just theory questions like for example ethics you can like read this statement and they'll say what's the best solution to do that doesn't take very much time so remind yourself that even though you could do this one problem over here but it would take you 10 minutes it's worth the same amount of points as the thing over here that's just words and you just pick a b c d okay you don't get marked down if you guess okay so like i know that when you took um the SAT exam, it was like you were docked if you guessed, right? You don't get marked down if you guess on this exam. Um, but you so you should try and fill them all out at least. Um, let's see what else. Is the EIT completely multiple choice? Yes. What is the minimum score required to pass? So that's like a secret. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a secret scoring that they don't really tell you. They do this for the FE and for the PE. So what they do, they have like guinea pig problems in there too. Like they're just trying some problems out. So some of the problems don't even count. Like they just don't count. They're just trying to see like how people do on them and you don't know which ones are which. And then also um, what they do is they do statistics on each problem and they say, well, did too many people get it right? Then it was too easy. And they eliminate that problem. Oh, did too many people get it wrong? Then that question was too hard. So they eliminate that problem. <laughs> and then what they do is they take the remaining problems and they rank you. Like they do the secret ranking and then they pass a secret top percent of like, we only want this many people to pass. Um, and so your passing score varies every single time based on your peers, basically, and based on which problems were on the exam, which change all the time. Um, so hard to say, but I would say it's not very high. It's like maybe 60%. Like if you got like a D or a C on it, you definitely pass. But like I said, that varies. Um, the number of questions is all the same. It's just what the questions are about. So when I was saying study for one test versus two tests, to me, the other disciplines exam felt like there weren't too many new subjects on it versus the civil one for me felt like there were a lot of new subjects on it that I hadn't taken those tests yet. So, but regardless of which focus you pick, they all have the same number of questions. The morning portions like three hours you get like a half hour lunch and then you take the afternoon portion which is another three hours professor um mm -hmm. can you go over to like why would i look at other dis like i'm doing civil for example and okay. it's, not, it's my first semester of my junior year but like you're saying you take it my junior year but i feel like there's like you're saying there's so much stuff i haven't taken like fluid mechanics and stuff like that um that's my point. So if you wanted to wait until maybe your first semester senior year and take the civil exam, then you would probably have taken most of the classes, like more of the classes by then. Um, and then you could take the civil exam. But, it, but all I'm saying is the longer you wait, the potential is if you don't pass the first time, now you're taking it your second semester senior year during your senior project, like that's going to be really tough, you know. Um, but it's doable. People have done it. The reason I chose the general or the other disciplines was because I was a junior when I took it, I think my second semester junior year. And I felt like I had already covered more of those topics and the other topics I hadn't covered, I felt like I could teach myself. It's a preference. So say you're doing civil, for example, mm -hmm. but you can still take any of the other ones to just and just pass one of those tests, right? Yes, every FE counts for the same. So whichever one you want to take, you can take. Okay, no matter if you're a mechanic or civil or... No, if you wanted to take chemical, you could. It wouldn't matter. Yeah, I'm saying if I'm civil, for example, but I was like you and I said other disciplines, like, because I, I knew more, that still count the same thing. It still counts. They When you get the certificate, it doesn't say what discipline you chose. Okay, it just, just says that you have your EIT. Okay. How many total questions are there usually? Well, if you open it up, you could do the math. I mean, it takes six hours. And you could add this up, 8 to 12, 4 to 6. You could maybe take the average, like 10 plus 5 plus 6. You could add all those up and figure it out. And you, then you would calculate how many minutes you have per problem. Yeah, it says 110 right there. Too. Oh, okay. Um, and then this is why, this is the whole point that I've been telling you about. Here, look. NCES approved calculators. So when you take, they're super strict about this. They don't even let you, you know how your calculator has like a cover? They don't even let you take the cover in because that has like buttons to push and stuff. They're really strict. You can't, you could not take this in because it has a wrapper on it. Like you, they're super strict about that. So this should look familiar because it matches exactly what's on the syllabus, which is these are the calculators that are allowed 
on the exam. So that's why I want you to get used to it. So for example, if you've been using your graphing calculator this whole time, I mean, good luck because it's not allowed on this test and they check. Other questions? So uh, is there any book or material that you use when you uh, do repair for the zine? Yeah, um, I think that, I don't know if they do it still, but I took a study course at Sac State where they, it was like a five week study course and it was like two hours a night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for five weeks. And they had different prof professors from all the different disciplines come in and help you study. So you might be able to sign up for like a study session um, thing at Zach State. I don't know if they still do that or not. It was through Tau Beta Pi, um, but anyone could have taken it. But I think like if you were a member of Tau Beta Pi, you got like a discount for the class. And then if you weren't, you had to pay full price. Um, so look into that. Um, but if, if they don't, I would just, I mean, if you've taken all the classes, that your study guide is just the list of the, you know, um, the list of the, the problems. So hopefully you kept like all your class notes and you would just say like, okay, I need to go back to my geometry. I need to go back to my single variable calculus and my vector stuff and like, I would just um, study this. I believe also you can order study materials from the website. Let me see. Um, they have approved testing centers. Yeah, I'm thinking about ordering the material tests for the test, but I'm not sure which ones I should uh, rely on. <clears throat> um, Oh, here's some pass rates. So these are the questions out of the pass rates. So this is just telling you though, like, okay, this is how many people took it last time. And this is how this was like what the score was to pass, I think is what that means. Um, and then this is based on your major, how many people passed the test when they took it. Um, here we go, resources, let's see. exam prep materials. So you can click there. I mean, I imagine getting it straight from NCS would be the best. Otherwise you can go to um, like just Amazon or something and buy a study book. And I would say that the Lindbergh author is probably the best. I mean, he's, he's the best definitely for when you're studying for the PE. I think he has FE stuff as well. So let's see. Let's see, I think it's like Lind, it's like a H somewhere, Lindberg. Yeah, there's an H. See, that's Lindberg FE exam. Let's see. I don't think, I don't think that's how you spell it. <laughs> I can't find the right spelling. Here we go, this guy. So. If you can find anything written by Michael Lindbergh, he's a good author. Um, and again, if you're like part of Tau Beta Pi, I think you can get discounts through PPI to pass um, on the materials as well. Okay, so there's a question here. It says, I have TI-36X Pro, which calculator will be the best for the FV exam? The TI-36X Pro, that's the best one. That's why I've been recommending that one. What did you mean by rather take one test instead of two? Like in my opinion, it felt like I was studying for one test instead of two because in the morning portion, everyone takes the same math and science questions. And then in the afternoon portion, you're taking your focused stuff like your civil, mechanical, chemical, electrical stuff. So when you choose the other disciplines one, it felt like it was more of the same topics from the morning, just a little bit harder. So to me, I felt like I was studying for one test instead of two, but in the end, everyone's answering 110 questions. You know, it's not like you're getting away with answering less questions. 
question for sure. So, uh, can I bring two approved calculator to the Zoom? Yes, you can, you can bring two. Yeah, as long as they're both approved. And just in case um, uh, they, uh, they die, so can I borrow from? Yeah, yeah from, you can bring yeah. two. Mm -hmm. I mean, can I borrow from the department or the no. office? No. No, you've got to bring just all your stuff. Yeah, if, if, if I bring it, but it die somehow. And can I borrow it? No. No, if you're at the testing center, you're going to be at a testing center. They don't have materials for you. So it's, you got to bring whatever you bring. So maybe bring two calculators in case one dies so that you have the second one. Oh, okay. Good to know that. It used to be in, because it was in person, it used to be only every six months, which is why it sucked if you didn't pass, you had to wait another six months. I think now because it's in the testing center, you might be able to take it like whenever you want, or it's like every two months or something. Um, so that if you don't pass, I think they make you wait a little bit. Like there's a forced waiting period so you can study again and they'll send you like a diagnostic of like, these are the problems you didn't do well on. These are the problems you, you did do well on kind of thing. Um, so I'm not sure I would, again, just go to their website and CES and poke around and it'll tell you all like, I'm sure they have a frequently asked questions thing as well. Um, Professor? Uh-huh. So after you do this and get your bachelor's, the next step is like, how do you, you get your PE not at Sac State, right? You get it somewhere else? Or? Yeah, so so your PE, I can only speak for the civils because that's what I am. Um, but for your PE, they changed the rules recently. There's an eight-hour exam that you could take right out of college if you wanted. You could take even in college, but I don't know where you're going to find time for that. <laughs> but it's an eight-hour exam that's just like kind of like the FE over again, but harder. Um, and so it's a standardized test, just like I just described. Um, I don't, I think that one might even be electronic now. That used to be in person at, at Cal Expo. I don't know. I'm not sure about if that one's in person or electronic yet. Um, but anyway, you can take that whenever you're ready. But to be a licensed civil engineer in the state of California, you have to have, um, you have to have passed another exam, which is a surveying exam and a seismic exam. So in both of those are exams about two and a half to three hours a piece. Um, and they won't even let you take those exams until after you pass the eight hour and after you've had your two years of experience. Now it's two years because you have your bachelor's. If there's someone who's trying to get this without a bachelor's, it's like way more years. I think it's like 15 years of experience you have to have before you can take the test. So if you have a bachelor's, it kind of shaves off time, but you still need two years and then you take two more exams. So you, it's, there's three more exams before you can get licensed. So I always thought for some reason after you get your bachelor's, like to get your PE, you had to like take two more years of courses or something. No. But it turns out so, to be just working, right, for two years? That's just working for two years. So uh -oh. you can get your master's. Like if, you've, if you sign up to take your master's, then that shaves off a year. So you're supposed to have two years of experience after your bachelor's. But if you get your master's, then they only require one year of experience after your master's. But it all comes out in the wash, right? Because it's going to take you a year or more to get your master's. <laughs> so it, everyone will probably be taking it around the same time if you're trying to take it like right away. I thought the point of master's was to get to the point where you can take your PE. But nope, you don't need your master's to get your PE. Okay. But master's still distinguishes you if you have a PE and a master's, right? Not really. I mean, no. not in my opinion and not in my industry. What, um, what about like pay wise? No. So as the PE is pretty much the highest goal you're in for. Yeah, because the masters, unless, so it might be better for you to get a job and then like 
make sure you like a certain topic and then you can convince your boss to pay for you to go get your master's so you don't have to pay for it yourself and you could do it on the side and like do it slowly and get it whenever you're ready um the problem with getting a master's right away it's two things you might think you're interested in a topic and then you dive deep and then you're not really and but you feel like too far in and then you end up getting a master's you don't even care about so like it's it's hard to theoretically know really what you think you're interested in until you actually start working and doing it so i that's just my humble opinion everyone has their own opinion um but i have found in the industry if they have two piles of people in the resumes one pile is someone who has worked for two years and one pile is someone who took two years to get their masters and has no work under their belt they're going to pick the person who has two years work experience because it's more hands-on and masters is like theoretical so it's more like it's just more studies it's like research it's that kind of thing and if that's the route you want to go then that's your choice yeah, that kind of changed how I view a little the uh, course a little bit. Yeah, you don't need a master's to get a PE. And if you want a master's and you're super interested in a topic, you might as well get a job and then let your job pay for you to go get your master's instead of you paying for it before you get a job. Um, I mean, you all should have a job now. Like, you should really be looking, if you're a junior, I think I started interning when I was a sophomore. Like, you should start interning now. Because, again, that'll set you apart from your peers. When everyone graduates, they're going to hire the people who had internships through college over the people who didn't. I know people, very intelligent, smart, capable people who took, now, again, I graduated when the economy was bad, but it took them like a year and a half to get a job because they had not had an internship all the way through college. Whereas I had an internship sophomore, junior, senior year, I was hired instantly because I was already on the staff of a company. So they just said, hey, do you wanna come on full time after you graduate? So it's just like a lot easier to get a job after you graduate if you have an internship already. Do you have any recommendations on where to look for internships? Um, I know that Sac State has career fairs like twice a year, so you could um, look at that. They also have each of your departments has a like um, a coordinator whose entire job is to help you get a job. So go to like your like if you went to um, CSUS. Um, C, uh, like C E. I looked this up a while ago. Let's see, what would it call it? Like career, yeah, they have a career center. So you can go to the career center, internships and career services just for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. And there's contacts and people, there's a virtual career fair here. And then there's people, this person you can contact for help so a lot of the companies will come and do job listings they'll send them to this person and so this person will have like all the job listings um or you could go to like indeed or linkedin or websites like that as well Okay, so if you see in the chat, there is a suggestion of where you can find job listings. UEI jobs. We have about three more minutes. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. There's a link there in the chat too. So moral of the story, in my opinion, get an internship as soon as possible pass the FE exam as soon as possible. Both of those things should be done before you graduate. Make sure you're working under a licensed professional and if possible, multiple licensed professionals for two years so that you can be prepared to then take your PE exam two years later. That consists of three exams. You can take them separately um, piece by piece, but you can't have that PE behind your name until after all three are passed and after your two years of experience. 
Do you feel like the two years of experience got you ready to take the PE exam, or do you feel like you forgot some of the stuff you learned in school? Um, it's interesting. For the PE exam, you get to pick your focus as well. So, like, I went in, and my first two years of experience were mostly, like, water, like, designing water features, like, um, culverts, ditches, basins, all those types of things. So then like I could have chosen like water resources, for example, or something like that as my focus. And so some people like to do that because they feel more prepared for the test because they feel like they've been doing the job. So now it's easy to like go design a biosoil or something on the P exam because they do that every day. So like some people find it easier. For me, it was hard. Um, because you're used to not studying for two years <laughs> and then you have to study again. Like you, you finally have your nights and your weekends back to you and you're like in the groove of things. And then now they're trying to get you to sit down and study. I studied a lot. I studied for five and a half months for the PE exam. It's a serious, serious commitment. Okay. And one last thing, do you think it you're saying it's like really important to do the internship, but like if you're taking like a like a lot of units, do you think it's kind of worth like sacrificing like a little bit of your GPA maybe because you wouldn't have enough time to like study fully for your classes to get the experience? Well, the internship, even if you're just working one day a week, like you know, like even if you only work Fridays, like you're going to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or something, and then you just go to your internship on Fridays. Like it doesn't have to be a full time job. It can be you know eight, sixteen, twenty hours tops. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of sacrificing your GPA, I would never recommend that. But if you have too many commitments, I mean, if you're saying your GPA would go from a 4.0 to 3.5, no one would really care. But if you're saying you're usually a 3.5 and now you're a 2.5 because work is stressing you out too much, then I wouldn't do that.